Hi everyone. Um, in this video, we are going to talk to you about doing research for your seminar papers. I'm Kristen Moore. I'm the Associate uh, Director of the Law Library. Hi, I'm Angelina. I'm your Student Services and Reference Librarian. I'm Sally Waters. I'm the Queen of Reference. And I'm Wayne I get that for being here forever. She is. She is our queen. That's true. Uh, I'm Juanita Scroggs. I'm the foreign and international law librarian, but I can help you with domestic U.S. legal research also. All righty. Let's dive right in. So the first thing we want to talk to you about is how do you find a topic? So there are a few things you can look at. You can look at circuit splits, um, and those are available in the United States Law Week, which you can find on Bloomberg. There are also uh, circuit split charts available in Bloomberg. Um, you may want to look at conflicting state statutes, and so you can do that by using 50 state surveys, and you can find 50 state surveys in Hine, Westlaw, and Lexis. There's also legal news and legal blogs. The, um, the legal news you can find in different places, but the best one is to go to Lexis. Up in the left-hand corner, you'll see that there's this thing that looks like a giant waffle. And if you click there, you'll see a link to Law 360. Lexis and Westlaw also, if you look at the list of contents on the main screen, you'll see areas for legal news. So you can get into news sites that way. Exactly. And remember, as you're looking at these sources, that as you're trying to figure out a topic, you're going to be trying to answer a legal question. So try to think along those lines, because your thesis will ultimately be the answer to that legal question. And exactly. that's why the circuit splits are really good, because if, if something is already settled, if there's not really a question to answer because everybody's agreed, then you probably don't want to write on that. So when there's a circuit split, it's like one circuit has said one thing and another circuit has said the exact opposite. So um, that's that's a good um, mm -hmm. um, uh, area to find topics to write on because you know that people are arguing about it already. Exactly. And legal blogs are also good because those are going to talk about current trends in an area of law and things that are a little bit more controversial or that are just kind of being talked about. So that's going to give you uh, topics to write on as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and the ABA, the American Bar Association, does a, uh, I think they still do like the 100 best blogs, blogs, B-L-A-W-G, legal blogs exactly. um, each year, so. Exactly, and so there's the Justia blog search, and then there's the ABA blog directory, um, and they both categorize the blogs by topic, so you can find an area that's of interest to you and then see if there's a blog on your topic. You also want to make sure you do some preemption checking before you start writing. And so a preemption check just is to determine whether or not there is already an article written on your topic. If there is, it's not necessarily the end of the world. You can always take a different point of view, argue it from a news perspective, something like that, just something to differentiate yourself from what has already been written. And so how do you complete a preemption check? Um, so the first thing you want to do is develop your terms. Then you want to search uh, for published law articles on your topic, but then you also want to search for published non-law articles on your topic, depending on what your, your subject matter is. You want to search for any upcoming articles or working papers that could be on your topic. You want to search for books and book chapters. And then you also want to subscribe to current awareness alerts uh, to keep an eye on things that might be coming out on your topic. And I, I think one misconception is that because we're a law library, we only have legal resources, but we have a lot of non-law databases as well. And we'll talk about some of those. Mm -hmm. And remember also, when you mentioned the thing about current awareness alerts, that a lot of websites, especially those dedicated to a particular type of source like regulations or statutes, will have their own way that you can set up awareness alerts. For example, if you go to congress.gov, which has um, has bills and follows them through the, the passage to um, an actual law, you can subscribe to current awareness so that you will be able to keep up with each stage of that, including the committee reports, including votes and mentions in the congressional record. So next, we want to talk to you about some library resources available to you. We have our online catalog where you can search for not just books in our collection, but also online resources in our collection. And we have an entire tutorial that's dedicated to how to use our online catalog. 
catalog and you can find that on our website. Um, we also have our databases A to Z, which will help you find some of those non-law databases we have. And we're gonna talk about some key ones that are gonna be important to you. We also create research guides and we have a research guide for every single seminar classes taught at Stetson. Um, and those guides will pull out the key resources for researching the topic that's related to your seminar. There's also a link to request interlibrary loans. So we have networks across the country um, with other libraries. So if we don't have something, we can probably borrow it from another library. Just make sure you give yourself plenty of time for that item to come in because if it's a book and it's going to have to be mailed to us, it could take some time for it to get here. Um, right. and then so there's a, a, a good tip, uh, speaking of interlibrary loans is, you know, start early in the semester doing some of your research. You don't have to necessarily start the writing right away. But if you'll start looking for your sources and you find something that looks perfect for you, but we don't own it, if you've done that early in the semester, that gives us more time to borrow it from another library for you so you're not running up against your deadline and unable to get the best materials. Absolutely. And then we've included the link straight to our website. It's important to bookmark that so it's right there and ready for you. Um, if you're researching books and book chapters, there's a few sites that are key uh, for finding those. Um, you can try worldcat.org. Our catalog is actually part of the WorldCat system. And so using the filters over on the left-hand side, there's a little checkbox, and you can actually search libraries worldwide. So you're not just searching our collection, but you're searching all the other libraries that use the shared cataloging system. You also have Google Books. Um, which is another great resource to search to find books on a given topic. And even sometimes there are previews, which are sometimes just little snippets, but sometimes are entire chapters. So Google Books is, can, can be really helpful. Um, and even, even if they don't have the whole book or whole chapters, it's a good way to find what books exist. And then you can come back to us and say, hey, I'm looking for this book. Do we own it? Can we get it from somewhere? Absolutely. Remember to use your advanced Google searching because there are certain filters that you can use in advanced searching um, that's going to make it easier to find books or find PDFs or find stuff from particular organizations. Sally, do you want to talk about some advanced Google searching? Because I know you are the queen of this. Um, with advanced Google search, when you go to Google and you've already done a search, look under tools and it's listed there under advanced. If it's not there, look for a sprocket in the top right-hand corner, but you will see the list uh, that includes advanced Google search. <coughs> when you're in there, you can search by site. You can specify what site you want. So if you just want things that are maybe on organizational websites, uh, you can specify that you want things only in PDF. And this is probably, I think, um, and I don't know if y'all are going to agree on this or not, but I think doing a PDF search is maybe one of the most useful things that you can do, because what that takes you to is things that have already been published, whether it's documents that have been scanned from a court or newsletters that an organization has done or a book that somebody's put up there. A lot of times you can find where people have put up articles that actually don't show up in one of our databases, but the author has scanned it online because they want someone to be able to read it. So and you some, can find a lot by doing that. Yeah, and so I agree. And, and uh, one of the things about doing a, a file type and you choose PDF is it also weeds out all the advertisements that you would normally get with Google. Yeah. You have right to documents. And then there's another website called archive.org. And again, Sally, this is, I know, one of your favorite tools. So I'm going to let you. Yeah. Archive.org is the Internet Archive, which is, it's always kind of hit or miss what you're going to find there. But a lot of libraries have put up books. A lot of uh, private um, owners have put up their own books. Um, it's a terrific source for finding things you can't find anywhere else. And I usually use it if I'm trying to find something, especially that may be out of print or came from um, a small publisher or just isn't in that many libraries, you may be able to find it on there. 
Um, one thing about archive.org is that when you do find books, a lot of times you'll see where you have to check it out. And don't worry about that because all that involves is basically a five minute process of signing up for a free account on archive.org. You'll quote, check the book out, but basically you've got it until somebody else asks for it. A lot of things on here you can download, you can send directly to your Kindle, but there's a huge amount of material here. And it's kind of surprising what you'll find on here. Like I've even found previous versions of the DSM on here, which you can typically only get from the APA and you have to buy it and to get the access to it online, but they actually have a version of it on um, archive.org, which yeah. is very nice. And as you're writing a seminar paper, you'll find that sometimes a historical background is necessary and you'll start going after sources that are a little more unique and a little more difficult to find. This is a great place to find things like that because having a well-rounded seminar paper means you're going to be pulling different types of sources, not just a primary authority that's available, but sometimes just that older books, older editions, anything that can give you a historical context. And we all love to dig for information. So if this all sounds daunting or intimidating to you, just ask. We're happy to help. We so. love it. <laughs> Especially Sally. <laughs> Moving on, uh, researching Hein Online. Hein Online is one of my favorite databases that we have, um, but is the best source for law review articles and journals um, because it's going to give you the actual scan of the print version of an article. So you're going to have all of that pagination. You're going to have any tables, charts, graphs, pictures that were in that article, um, which can be very helpful when you're doing your research. Um, whereas if you find that same article on Westlaw or Lexis, you're just going to find a full text transcript of the article, which is just the text of the article, none of the other stuff. Um, and because those are transcriptions, sometimes there are little inaccuracies even. Um, so Hein Online is your best bet for those online uh, law review articles and journals and usually they're going to have better they're going to have better coverage than Westlaw or Lexis because they're going to have that journal from inception volume one issue one through the current sometimes we have an embargo uh, for a couple years but Hein online is your, usually your best bet um, and it's also going to have bar journals so like the Florida bar mm -hmm. Kentucky bar which have those kind of practical guidance uh, articles um, but Hein Online, definitely for your law review journals and articles, and then a ton of other stuff. They have your 50 state surveys. They have CRS reports, which we're going to talk about in a little bit. They have a lot of legislative history. Oh, I could go on and on and on. Like, <laughs> this literally is one of my favorite resources. You'll probably well, find that you work on your paper. Of... Oh. Excuse me. You're good. <laughs> uh, Juanita, they have a lot of international journals, don't they? They do. They have an entire foreign and international law section. They call them libraries within Hein. They have a whole library that's all about foreign and international. They also have something that's called World Constitutions Illustrated. And it's all about constitutions from different countries, including the U.S., with all the different versions and all the amendments and all the commentary. And so even though um, you might just be doing a U.S. constitutional issue, you can find that in constitutions of the world. You don't have to be looking at other countries, but those countries are there as well. Definitely. And I was just going to say that you'll find that you go to these resources specifically with law reviews and journals quite often throughout the seminar paper writing process. First, as you're doing preemption checks and basic research, maybe to check the footnotes to see what other scholars are talking about, and even just to get a sense of what your deliverable will look like since many mm -hmm. seminar courses are essentially training you to write a law review type of paper. So it's a, a great way to jump into the scholarly debate from the earliest you know, stages of your research all the way up until the end and figuring right. out who mining, you want to respond to. Yeah, mining footnotes is, is an mm -hmm. awesome strategy. Absolutely. Because you're looking for, like she said, other sources or other authors. Because generally, if somebody writes in a particular area, they do that for their whole career. They're not jumping around from one subject to another. So if you find somebody who writes an article, even if maybe it, it's a little bit older, that person is likely to have written a lot of other things on the same topic. So definitely the citations in a, you know, a well done law review or journal article are sometimes almost like an expert curated research guide for you. They show you exactly what experts are looking at. Moving on, um, you may also find yourself doing some interdisciplinary research. And so, as we said, we don't have we have more than just law uh, <laughs> resources available to you. And so this is just a list of some of the key ones that we subscribe to. 
Um, there's ABI Inform Complete, there's Academic Search Premier, there's EBSCOhost, JSTOR. JSTOR is really good for uh, humanities kind of stuff. Um, and I think a lot of people probably recognize JSTOR from undergrad. Exactly. <laughs> Uh, I did uh, Western Legal Thought as my seminar when I was a student here. I lived in JSTOR because I was looking at a lot of uh, legal, uh, historical religion um, and the law kind of crossover stuff and also looking at some philosophy um, and things like that. So JSTOR was one of my favorites. Uh, we have the ProQuest Research Library, Psych Info, um, and Science Direct. Science Direct is really good if you're needing some of those harder sciences. Um, like so if you're in bi environmental law, things like exactly, that. Exactly, your biology, anything like that. ProQuest Research Library is a wonderful source if you're looking for anything from um, historical backgrounds. So, for example, if you're trying to find something that happened in the 1920s in New York, the New York Times is on there complete. Uh, so is the Washington Post, so are about three other newspapers. But another thing that people don't realize is that those are also on their current, so that if you needed an article that was in yesterday's New York Times, it's going to be on ProQuest Research Library. Click on change database when you first get on there and you'll see a list of the different databases that it has. Exactly. And that's kind of another thing I want to point out. When you use these databases, make sure you're going through the library's website and clicking on our databases A to Z link and then clicking on the link from there to go directly into the database because that way the database recognizes you as a subscriber to this product. If you go to it just strictly from the website, they're going to be like, we don't know who you are. You need to log in and right. go through our databases. It, if you're off campus, it will ask you to authenticate. And it's, that's the same username and password that you use to get into your stats and email. So just make sure you're right. going so, through our website. Right. So if you're if you're searching for stuff on the open internet, that's fine. But then when you try to access those things, it's going to say, who are you? Right. So just like she said, come back through our databases A to Z and see if we have that thing like JSTOR or ProQuest or whatever and, and go in through our servers. Yeah. So they know you've paid for it. Exactly. And then just a few other sources for some articles. Uh, you have Google Scholar, um, which has all the ease of using Google, but is pulling, rather than everything from the web, it is pulling those more scholarly articles that have been written by professionals in the field. Um, there's also SSRN, which is the uh, Social Science Research Network, but it does include law journals um, and law articles. And this is a great place to find those working papers. So people who are writing, they will kind of, they'll publish their working papers here before they are in final form to be put in a journal. And then again, remember that, remember that Google advanced searching. This is where using that file type PDF really comes in handy for finding journal articles as, you know, PDF scans. Mm -hmm. And this is a lot. Don't don't feel overwhelmed. We're here. This is what we do for a living and we're here for you. So stop by or if you want, you can make an appointment, but you don't have to. You can just come by and we're here seven days a week. We're, we don't have Rebecca Frank with us right now, but she's here on the weekends and all of us are happy to help you. Don't don't be shy about asking questions. That's why we're here. Right. And we're also available by email. So you can right. also email us. Exactly. Um, and then we also want to talk about CRS reports, uh, which are awesome. reports. They are. They're, <laughs> they're reports published by the Congressional Research Service, and they are nonpartisan. They um, will write these reports at the request of Congress um, on a given topic. Um, and you can find them on Hein Online. You can find them on congress.gov. Um, for a while, they weren't made available to the public officially. Um, but they still wound up on Google. Um, so you can, to find some of the older ones, you can do uh, just a Google search for whatever your topic is, CRS report. Mm -hmm. um, and then ProQuest Congressional also has uh, them available. Yeah, and the awesome thing I like about CRS reports is there, if you find one on your topic, it is a gold mine and it's just wonderful. And I think I can speak for everybody here because we're all information nerds. I think we would all love to work for the Congressional Research Service except I'm pretty sure they're based in DC and it's cold. <laughs> so no, Which I don't know why work. that work hasn't moved remote yet, but. <laughs> I know, right? I, it should, right? But the CRS reports are awesome. So like she said, just do a Google search for your topic, CRS report. And even if you find an older one, 
then take the specific title of that report and search that and because they do update them because you know how it is that like you'll enter a bill into congress and it didn't pass this session but you're going to try again next session so those reports get updated for congress so once you find one then use that title as your search term Absolutely. And they cover a wealth of topics. So even if you're not sure if there's going to be one about your topic, it is definitely worth checking. You may be surprised and find something that's just perfect, exactly what you were looking for. They're really good for giving you um, a guide to the development of the law. So usually you'll start off with something like, here's why there was a need for this law. Here's how it's changed and how it's been amended and what will be happening as a result. And possibly what you might expect on this topic um, as time goes on. They give a very, very broad approach, but also they give you a lot of specific citations to legislative history, to um, other related laws. They're just great. And if I was researching a federal topic, this definitely is something I would look for. All right. That is it for this video. Um, and as we've already said, if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to ask us. Uh, we really do love digging for information and that's what we're here for. You can stop by the Larkin room, you can call, you can email. Uh, somebody is here seven days a week. Um, is it Monday through Friday, 9 a.m. to 7 p.m.? Mm -hmm. Saturday, 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. and Sunday noon to five.